So you want to be on an Overwatch team. That's great. And the scene's actually really big right now as far as lots of people want to join teams. Lots of people want to make teams. So if you're watching this around the time that I'm uploading it, then you have it pretty easy actually compared to most games. But this is going to apply to any time and actually any game even, whether it's Dota or League or Counter-Strike or Overwatch of course, any game this will apply. So the first question is, do you want to join a team or do you want to make a team? Now, right now, high tier orgs and high tier teams are still actually really open. The competitive scene is very open. So if you're a grand master player, like a super amazing top tier player, you actually have a shot at joining one of these really good teams when they have slots open. But this isn't really directed towards those super mega top tier players. This is for just ordinary players who want to make a team, want to actually have a good team, maybe even win tournaments and actually be successful. So back to the question, join or create? Creating a team gives you a lot of control and really your individual actions can by themselves create a successful team. You don't have to rely on joining a team that maybe has a bad team captain or maybe they're with a sketchy org or like you don't have to deal with any of that old baggage. You can just start it fresh and really rely on your own team building skills and own management skills to carry the team as high as you want to bring it. And we'll get into a lot of those skills later on in the video, but you have to really commit a lot of time in that case. Now, if you are new to the competitive scene, to teams in general, or if you just don't have like a super amount of time, make maybe you want to spend two or three hours a day, like two hours scrimming or so, but you don't have like that real big investment of 24 seven, you're always like on your phone monitoring, checking up, checking out what's going on and just really have it be kind of almost part of your life. If you, if you are the team captain managing a team solo, it really becomes almost uh, integrated into your life in a sense. So if you just want to play, definitely join a team. And even if you join a team and you want to take it to the next level, don't feel like you're limited by the current management. Now, sometimes you can't do anything about it, but a lot of times, if the team captain is inferior, like not very good, if you're clearly better, uh, if the manager's not good, if, like I said, if you're with a sketchy org or something, oftentimes you can wind up just taking the team, like taking the roster minus maybe the team captain who you don't like, and just taking it, essentially. Uh, I don't want to say hijacking it, but that's kind of what it is. Take it and really push it forward by yourself. So don't be scared to do that. If you find that a team that you join is just not going anywhere because of the leadership, just say, hey, guys, screw the leadership. Let's go and take the entire roster with you. Of course, I'm talking about amateur teams here. We're not talking about pro teams or anything like that. So how do we do that? Well, uh, there's this program called Discord. Everyone knows about it. But anyway, there's a Discord channel called Cow League. There are probably others, but this is the biggest one I know, and this one's just insane. So let's say you want to join a team. Well, that's pretty easy. Teams looking for players right here. And there's just, it just goes on and on and on and on. This is just, yes, this is starting yesterday. And look at all these posts. There's so many. But if you want to start your own team, if you want to create a team, then there's also players looking for teams. So you should do this. You should post a uh, <clears throat> new team looking for players. It's probably not going to get too many responses, to be honest. What you do, what you have to do is you have to go scout out players. And you have you either do that in solo queue. You know, if you're playing in solo queue, you see someone you really think is good, you party up with them, play a few games with them. If you're liking each other, be like, hey, you know, I'm making this team. Do you want to try? Do you want to try and uh See if you can join. Maybe we can start a team together or something like that. Uh, that is really effective. But also there's this players looking for teams. And you have to be careful. So let's say you're making a team and you're in uh, just maybe high diamond. Maybe you're even in masters. So you're going to want to look for people obviously around your skill level. A lot of people never wind up finishing a team. Never even wind up finishing a roster. And I have a friend who just was going through this issue. They couldn't finish a roster because they're just shooting too high. Even if you are, even if you have a group of like three people and you're all masters, you can't just find masters. Like if we look through here, uh, let's take this guy. I'm, I'm, I don't know who any of these people are. Just picking them out randomly. So this guy is uh, EU top five. Obviously, I have to make sure they're in the right time zone. Obviously, uh, top five hundred flex DPS. Uh, he wants to look for a team with high level. This guy's probably just by the phrasing of his thing, he's very confident. He, probably not a player who you can get with a brand new kind of janky team you can't shoot too high and like this guy formerly on team whatever peak 15 and a lots of scrim experience 4000 blah, blah 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 this guy thinks he's awesome so probably not a guy you can go for you have to kind of aim low at the start aim low so somewhere like this guy <clears throat> 3k rating for the most part so he's probably like th exactly 3000 
support main, looking for a team, maybe scrim daily. That's a guy. Now, that's a guy you want because he's probably enthusiastic. He wants to join a team. And maybe he doesn't have the stats. Maybe he's like, ah, oh, 4,000 hours on a previous team, super ultra uh, Terminator man. But that's the sort of player you want. You're an entry-level team, so you want entry-level players. And those are the type of players who are going to join you anyway. So anyway, go through here, scout out people. Remember, aim low enough so that you can get a good amount of applicants. Even if you have to go for high, I mean, if you're like a 3,500 player, let's say, even if you have to go for like high plat, like 2,900s or so, it's fine. Just complete a roster. That's 100% uh, what you need to do at first just complete any roster that's not going to be your final roster remember just any roster to get the team off the ground so and again for the example in this video we're going to be saying that we're creating a team so after you've tried out a couple people just uh, very generally right the, you, these players aren't amazing but they're okay they're nice you kind of get along together and so now you finally have your adventuring party together of your fighter mage cleric thief uh bard and archer you can Wait, wait, no, no, that's that's not right. I, I mean, I mean, sorry, your support DPS tank and then off DPS tank and support. So once you have some roster of six reasonably okay players that are acceptable, then uh, you need to start looking for scrims, obviously. You have to start playing together. But hold your horses. That is the biggest, well, actually, all of these are the biggest mistakes. that I'm going I'm to go through a lot of mistakes in this video. But uh, a really terrible team-destroying mistake is just get a roster together and be like, okay, guys, let's go play. And uh, that's not going to work. That's not going to help your team at all. So what you need to do is before you start scrimming, take two or three maps. Don't go through all the maps. That's way too much. But take two or three maps and go through strats. So, and they need to be very, very specific, like down to every, like everyone is in their exact positions. So for example, and I'm not saying this is the best strat ever or that every team should run it, just to, just that as, as an example, let's say that we want to run a Hollywood because our team kind of likes Hollywood. So you can say, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to push out and then our, our DPS and our damaging support is going to take uh, stair control while the rest of our team comes around quickly though. This is all executed very quick, quickly comes over here and now the dps and the support should have roof control if they try to push you upstairs we pincer them and if they don't then we just push in and so we have four players down here and then the the support and one of the dps's like an anna and a mccree for example is up there and we just sort of take the site like that using that high ground advantage so that's a really really specific strat and then you go into more details like which player does what you know some contingency things but basically you have a strat that everyone knows exactly what they're doing. There's no ambiguity, very, very clear. And like I said, do that for two or three maps and then find a scrim. So again, you're in luck. If you go to the Cow League Discord server, uh, you have scrims right here, scrims NA right there for North America. And if you look, like this says today and yesterday, whoa, look at all those teams, holy cow. As a lot of teams looking for scrims, very, very easy to find a scrim right now at all levels, medium, high, uh, even low. It's very, very easy. So just find a random scrim, a uh, random team. Make sure they're not too high of a level, though. That's really bad. Make sure that it's a relatively not very good team. Make sure you message them beforehand. Say, hey, you know, we're a new team. Uh, are you guys really good? Because we don't want to just get absolutely, uh, you know, stomped in our first match, in our first set of matches. And so find a team that you think is suitable for you. Now, at that point, you play the scrims and you make sure that you play those maps that you specifically went over and you do those strats. Do not do anything but your strats. Don't wing it if the strats aren't. You should have two or three strats for each of those maps. So if one strat doesn't work, you just alternate to a different one. But do not, under any circumstances, go off of the strat, especially in the beginning. That's very important to have that structure. Now, the other team is probably going to want to play different maps than the ones that you've prepared, and that's okay uh, for courtesy, right? Play, play the maps with them, but just tell your team to understand that it's just like kind of practice -y. Like, it's, it's just a joke. Don't, don't worry about that map too much. Just use it to build rapport and, uh, you know, synergy. At this point, you should also really make sure that your comms are tight. Now, I'm not going to go through comms in this video because that's way too much for one video, but I'm going to put one out pretty soon regarding good comms. And so definitely check that out when I put that video out. Another big mistake that can kill teams early on 
And even like higher level teams, not pro teams obviously, because they have infinite amount of time, but higher level teams that still aren't like professional go through this problem too of just scrimming too much. They do, and I know that sounds crazy, but let's just take an example. So here we have our team, of our initial team that are just jank roster that we got uh, off the Cowboys or whatever. And obviously everyone's going to have a different amount of time that they can put into the game. You're not professional, you're not getting paid. And so most people will have around four hours if they want to be really serious and play for a team. Most people have about four hours, I found three or four hours. Uh, some people will join your team and be like, oh, I only have two hours. And that's that's going to be too low. But And then some people, maybe they are uh, working at home or something like that. For some reason, they're a high school student. They just have a ton of time to put in the game. So you're going to have to deal with everyone having different schedules. And I don't mean in terms of what time do we scrim. I mean in terms of how long do they have to practice. And as uh, a coach, this is something that I have to deal with a lot for teams that don't just have an unlimited amount of hours, like non-professional teams. Let's say that on average your team members have three or four hours a day to dedicate to Overwatch. You can't scrim for three to four hours a day in that case. That's way too much. These, all of your players need to be able to practice by themselves or like in solo queue, they need to be able to work on their individual skills. They can't just scrim all the time. That's gonna really hurt their individual ability. If, if you're one of these players with only four hours, it's gonna hit, hurt your individual ability. And uh, it's just going to really start to wear on them. If you only scrim, and never have that cooldown or the warm up, especially of playing in random solo queue games, maybe quick play games, just messing around. It's going to really hurt you really fast. Plus, there are teams that, let's say they only have three to four hours a day. Maybe they do some solo queue, but they don't take any time out to go through strats or anything like that. So all they do is scrim and they never review VODs. That's another bad thing. You have to manage your people's time properly. And we do this by, again, taking the average. So let's say the average is about a little a little over three hours on this team. Uh, not quite four hours, right? So let's divide the week up into maybe, remember, it's an amateur team, so maybe six days, five or six days. Let's do six days. And you understand that this player is going to be underperforming, but that's not something you deal with now. That's something you deal with later. So again, about six days times, let's say, 3.5 hours gives you about 20 hours about 20 hours per week to for your Overwatch team to develop. Now, that means that you can't have 20 hours of scrimming. That's going, like I said, to kill your team. In this case, I would only schedule maybe eight to 10 hours max, max eight to 10 hours of scrimming per week for this team that only has 20 hours per week total to put into it. Let's say that it's eight hours total. Now, the I would put eight hours towards just individual playing the game like just go play the game guys uh, that was a big issue I had with a previous roster where there were a lot of players who just didn't play the game it's like guys you have to be playing the game outside of scrims and all they ever did was scrim and they never solo queued or anything like that it's like yeah you have to play you have to go play the game by yourself guys get better and so uh, definitely allocate at least the same amount of time to just letting them go and play the game by themselves in solo queue dual queue whatever something like that and then the remaining time in this case four hours would be put towards vod review strat development and remember specific don't just go and watch a vod and be like all right so we made a mistake there yeah whatever and i guess we made a mistake there uh, like, like, like passively viewing it kind of like that you want to go in uh, if you're the coach or you're the manager if you're the guy in charge even if you're not in charge you want to bring these things to the table when your team has their little meeting you want to go over specific strategies that you already have pre prepared beforehand you want to go over specific mistakes that are in the vods like pay attention to one thing for example say okay in this vod we're going to look at how fast we push again downtime right because um after you push and die that downtime is just eating into your time the time it takes you to set up and plan and prepare for your next push right so you say in this vod we're only going to look at the downtime between pushes and see how we can improve that be very very specific in your vod review really push these four hours to the max all right so now that we have your team schedule i mean it's not like a schedule specific days but you have your time budget i'll call it you can start planning around that and every week add a couple more maps to your repertoire the, to the team's repertoire of strategies and if strategies aren't 
working for certain maps. Remember, don't ditch them in the middle of the game. If a strategy isn't working, if you're playing a game and the strategy isn't working, keep doing it, right? And eventually you'll find out, oh, this strategy isn't working. So go back, fix up your old strategies, come up with new strategies, and just make sure, like I said, push those four hours to the limit and keep keep adding, keep adding. So now we're hitting the next big turning point for a lot of teams. Eventually you're going to hit a wall with this roster. Assuming no one quits, which is its own issue in itself, eventually you're going to find, oh, the team that we couldn't beat two weeks ago, we still can't beat, and it's still a stomp. We just can't get any better. Now that's clearly... Either a strat problem, but we're going to assume that you're smart and you have your strats all figured out. Or it's a roster problem. So in this case, we have this support player who's only putting in two hours. What that means is he's probably coming to all of your scrims, maybe making it to most of your VOD reviews, but he's probably not playing it all by himself. And he might wind up struggling to scale up with your team because of that. He might wind up dropping off. This is just an example. So in this case, you always want to talk to your players. Remember, they're human beings. They're probably kind of your friends also. So talk to them. Be like, hey, what's up? Give them some chances to improve, but really make it clear that you're looking to push this team and make it better. And if that's going to require a roster change. You can't just, it's a fairy tale to think that you're just going to come up with six people off the cowboards and bring that roster all the way up to the world championship. You should make it very clear from the start that, hey, you know, this this roster, you're going to try to work with everybody to try to keep them all on the roster, but the roster is definitely malleable. It's going to change as time goes on. So don't expect these six players to be these six players if the team continues a month, two months, three months, a year from now. So in this case, take the weak player aside, and you're going to find the weak player based on your VOD reviews. Don't call them out in the middle of the team, of course, obviously. But take them aside. Be like, hey, I think this is the problem. Here's how I think you can uh, resolve it. So in this case, this guy obviously has to put in three hours maybe. Or, sorry, sorry, not three hours, that's probably too little, four hours, and try to work it out. Chances are, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, you can't work it out, and the players won't be able to get better. Uh, it's really unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. Most players um, don't have the ability to just improve and get better on a dime. That's, that's a special talent. So chances are, this player, for example, is going to have to be replaced with someone else. But now here's the kicker. Now you have an established team. You've already gone through a lot of the initial stages. You have strats. You have a structure. Probably have some uh, rapport with each other. Now you can go back. You can go back to your Discord, to the Cow League, to wherever you're using to recruit from. And you can get some of these better players now. Again, not all the players, right? You're not going to be able to get Taimu or something if he was a free agent. But you're going to be able to get much better players. So increase your standards at this point. Look for maybe only master tier players. It'll be much easier. So now you've upgraded your roster. That's a very important thing to note, guys. Like, I can't stress that enough. It's not personal. You can't think of it as like a personal clubhouse. You have to be willing to upgrade your roster. And remember, uh, sometimes, you have to be, sometimes you're the next upgrade, right? So you have to really make sure that you're pushing yourself as a player as well. You don't want to be in the awkward position. I, I, I hate that when the captain is actually the weak link and... It's just like really, really hard at that point. So make sure the player is not you. You have to be willing to make change the roster and slowly upgrade. That's what you do. So you start with the jank roster, like I said before, of kind of the, the players that are lower than you want. And then slowly, as you get better, you upgrade. So first you can upgrade the support maybe, and then uh, and maybe upgrade the Genji. And remember, hours doesn't mean everything, right? Maybe this, maybe this support player, even though they have a ton of time on their hands, is not that great or has a bad attitude, that's really important. Definitely take care of players who have a bad attitude. If someone's really good, but they have a terrible attitude, cut them. Uh, don't be afraid to cut people. Cut, 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 cut. That's what I'm all about because it gives them a better opportunity and it gives your team a better opportunity. It's good for everyone. But always give them a chance to work it out first. Never just be like, yeah, you're done, cut, no, no warning. So basically at that point, you just rinse, repeat. Keep going through slowly as you get players with more hours. Maybe eventually you get better and you can uh, maybe get some sponsors or something. Hopefully these hours get bumped up. So maybe 10 hours. And as, as the team gets more successful, people will want to put more hours in anyway just because it's fun. It's fun to have success, right? Eventually these hours will be bumped up to more and more over time as you get better. 
And uh, the last thing I want to say, because this video is just about over, because I don't want to get into too many topics, like I said, this is a huge topic, we're just going over the basics, the basic, basic, basics. But the last thing I want to say is tournaments, all right? So another thing is teams, a lot of times, get stuck in just scrimming. You have to make a concerted effort, even in the first week of having this team, of being on a team or whatever. In the first week, you need to have a tournament. At least once per week, you should have a tournament, because... If you're just scrimming, there's no point. The team has no direction. The direction should be, let's say, because uh, the Cow League, like I said, I, I, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Cow League or anything. This is just uh, one of the best resources for uh, doing Overwatch. So uh, Cow League has tournaments. They have lots of different teams in it, not too high level. So that's just one example. There's lots of different tournaments out there. Pick a tournament, play a tournament every week with the goal of slowly improving, getting higher and higher and higher, and eventually winning the tournament because that's the whole point of playing on a team is uh, playing in tournaments and winning tournaments. And, and so I, I had another friend who had another team who had that issue too. They were literally scrimmed for like five months or something. So long. I don't know, five months, like three months, a long, long time. And they just never played in tournaments. So eventually the, the players got frustrated and was like, what's the point? We're just scrimming for no reason because we're not in tournaments. So don't be afraid. Even if you're terrible, even if you think you're terrible, rather, play in tournaments. At least once per week, uh, make some time for tournaments. And if a player and if players don't have the time to play in tournaments, then they're not very sustainable players. You need to take care of that. And uh, you have to work that into your time budget as well somehow. But anyway, guys, I'm not sure how long this video turned out to be, but I hope it didn't turn out to be too long. Uh, I just like, there's so many things to talk about regarding teams and Overwatch, and I just wanted to go over the basics, and it's hard to condense it down and, and not just go off on a thousand different tangents because I could give entire courses probably on this with hours and hours of lectures. But uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something from it, maybe even had a little bit of fun. So if you have any additional questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Tomorrow I do want to stream, but I'm not too sure, no promises. At the very least, I will have a VOD review video out tomorrow, because I know that I haven't done one for a while. But uh, if you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, I will be uh, giving that information, whether I'll be streaming tomorrow, or whether I'm just going to be putting out a normal video like I usually do. If I do stream, it'll be in the evening, around 7 o'clock, here on YouTube. Uh, YouTube Live, so definitely look out for that, and also check out my new uh, mini-series that I'm putting out on Twitter, one minute little tip videos that goes over all of the hero abilities in the game, one minute each, going into some additional things you might not have known, or just how to use them in a competitive game, uh, tips and tricks, stuff like that. So anyway, stay positive, have a great day, peace out guys.